Good evening, and on behalf of Dr. Joseph Pepe and our senior leadership team, I'd like to thank you for attending either in person or virtually our liturgy celebrated by Bishop Peter Labashi of the Diocese of Manchester. Our liturgy is for the intention of all Catholic Medical Center patients who have died during COVID-19. We at CMC have witnessed firsthand the devastation of COVID-19, not only that of 53 of our patients who died of it, but the countless patients who lost their lives to other illnesses and diseases, and were limited in the number of loved ones who could be with them. We gather in trusting those who have died to our loving God, and we pray that their families will find solace and peace. I would like to take the opportunity on behalf of Catholic Medical Center to thank Peter Labashi for graciously being with us and for the wonderful support he has provided Catholic Medical Center, not only during this pandemic, but his time as Bishop of Manchester. Many thanks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, all gathered here, present in this place, and present in spirit, and through this medium of technology, how it is that God gathers together all of his people when most in need. And by the descent of the Holy Spirit gathered all nations together, into his eternal love. So it is especially at this time in remembering what we have been going through and what all of you have endured during this time of illness. The Holy Spirit was always present. The Holy Spirit descended with a peace that is beyond all understanding. Scripture speaks of this. And so we celebrate this Mass in union with Jesus in a very special way who took on himself all of human nature. And when we say that, we remember Bethlehem. We remember many other parts of Scripture. But what I think we fail to remember is he took on human nature in that when he died on the cross, his closest friends were not with him. There is something here that we must remember. When he was brought to rest in the tomb, he did not rise until the third day. Human nature recognizes that grief takes time. And Jesus, on the third day, rose. Because as my niece would say, I've got to get my head around this. His disciples, humanity, and ourselves to realize what had occurred. And in that time, questions are brought forward, answers are not readily available. The Holy Spirit brings us always to the essential truth. He is risen. He is alive. He is among us. And so it is a holy and wholesome thought to pray for those who have gone ahead of us. For in Christ we will all be reunited when the time is right. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who willed that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realm of heaven, grant, we pray, to your departed servants that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their Creator and Redeemer, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. Judas, the ruler of Israel, took up a collection among all his soldiers, amounting to 2,000 silver drachmas, which he sent to Jerusalem to provide for the expiratory sacrifice. In doing this, he acted in a very excellent and noble way, inasmuch as he had the resurrection of the dead in view. For if he were not expecting the fallen to rise again, it would have been useless and foolish to pray for them in death. But if he did this with a view to the splendid reward that awaits those who have gone to rest in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Thus he made atonement for the dead, that they might be freed from this sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. heart and on your lips that you may proclaim this gospel worthily and well in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the childlike the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Your reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. 
Whoever loves his life will lose it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will, be, will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. Jesus takes on our humanity and he speaks in such a way that he's recognizing what he is facing. He is recognizing so much of his inner feelings and what is happening around him. And he says, Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this purpose I came to this hour. I want you to know how grateful how proud and how very, very much vindicated I believe we all must be because of what you have done here at Catholic Medical Center. Coming to this hour, when you would want to say, Father, save me from this hour, all that is happening, the concern, the fear, the danger, the exhaustion, and the separation, knowing that there were people outside who could not come in. And we say all the time how important visitors are to support and to encourage the patient. What should I say, Father, save me from this hour? I am so grateful for Catholic Medical Center, all of the staff, all of the administration, and even the board of directors, everybody working together to support and to sustain this mission of Jesus Christ being in the midst of the sick and in the midst of a most difficult time. It was for this that medical center and Catholic care for the sick, Catholic care for the dying, Catholic witness to Jesus Christ is proclaimed. It was for this hour that Jesus stood with you. And when we saw, and I think everybody saw, probably across the nation on television, when people would hold up the sign, we saw that. He's at peace. Isn't that what Jesus said when he came back to the disciples on Easter night? Peace. And they did not quite know what to do with that. That is why Jesus said he could not be, he would not be saved from the hour of tribulation because he would bring the peace and the goodness that a human being looks for in the darkest time. And not a peace that is somehow fleeting or just a nice word. It's the vision of faith the vision of conviction, the vision that I wouldn't tell you this if it weren't true. So it is that I want everyone to know and be reminded, and I'm sure you do know and do remember, how gentle, how present, how prayerful and how loving was this community for each individual patient in the hour of their passing. 
not unlike Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, who went to Pilate and asked, please give us our dear one. Let us have the body of the Christ. And they tended to him in his final needs and they are remembered forever in the scriptures. I am so grateful for this Catholic hospital that took on the divine nature as Jesus took on the human. By being that presence of Jesus Christ, being able then to share in his own moment, you became for Jesus. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. You cared for the body of Christ in each one who was passing. And Christ was here. These are the things that you cannot always count on or imagine. But again, I'm going to say, like my niece would say, we gotta wrap our head around it. It takes time to understand. But every now and again, in a moment of prayer, every now and again, looking at a holy picture, looking at the crucifix, seeing Jesus in that moment, he was there because he understood and he endured and he entered into this moment of our life. Many of the church fathers used to refer to Jesus as the divine physician and healer of souls. What a beautiful thing, an MD on the sleeve of Jesus the Christ. They said because, and in fact some later saints would write about it, how when the soul is sick, Jesus becomes very present and by his grace, it's as if he draws the curtains so the sun shouldn't bother the eyes. He brings a soothing ointment and a presence. And that's not a joke, that's what sacraments are all about. And Father Bart, you made sure that Jesus Christ, the divine physician and healer was present in the sacrament of the anointing. How wonderful it is to know that the doors of this place up on the hill can open up and Jesus can radiate outward and enter in. Pope Francis is very crazy about that, you know, that we should not be in our sacristies. We've got to go out and in. So does Jesus. He is eager to be present. Because as he said in the gospel that we heard, I am troubled now. Yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. To be there when they most need it. I have already walked a mile in their shoes, he said. I understand, he says. Now I must carry them because they have walked far enough. They have walked to the gates of life and all of you, all of you have enabled them to walk with courage and the very great hope. To all of you who would worry, you may have your hearts put at ease. This is a holy house. The Lord dwells here, and with all of the staff, he is the divine physician. He is the healer of souls. Trust in him. Remember, 
He entered into our humanity, not just in Bethlehem, not just here or there, but when it mattered most. And when it mattered most here in this hospital. God bless you. And God be glorified in you. And God bless each and every one of you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us turn now in prayer to the Lord, lifting up our hearts as is our custom and as is our responsibility and faith. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Roman Catholic Church, in a special way in the Diocese of Manchester, may the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen and uphold her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the evil and deep-seated sin of racism throughout our nation and world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those individuals experiencing financial and emotional stress due to the COVID-19 pandemic, may our gracious Lord assist them in providing for the needs of their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Catholic Medical Center's patients, may they receive health, healing, and hope from the CMC medical providers and staff, in the comfort of the Lord's healing presence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those Catholic Medical Center patients who have died during the COVID-19 pandemic, may Jesus, the, dental sh the gentle shepherd who brings rest to souls, give them the peace forever, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those families of CMC patients who grieve the death of their loved ones, may the Lord give them solace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord, turn to us. Listen to your people at prayer and grant to them the comfort and the assurances of faith, knowing that indeed you are present and you have shown your face already to those beloved who have gone ahead of us. Grant this peace to each and every one, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the sacrificial offerings we present to you for the souls of your servants. 
And just as you have bestowed on them the dignity of the Christian faith, grant them also its reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. When this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Holy Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Work on them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless Joseph, her spouse. We bless the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be urged to turn on life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all day. And now with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I think I'm going to be here
Let us pray. Through these sacrificial gifts which we have received, O Lord, bestow on your departed servants your great mercy, and to those you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Thank you, Dr. Pepe. Thank you. And again, Father Bart, I thank you so much for bringing the sacraments to those who were very, very much in need of that sacramental anointing and absolution. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.